Welcome to NST222 Study Session 14 Cancer and Heredity Introduction Cancer is fundamentally a disease of tissue growth regulation failure. In order for a normal cell to transform into a cancer cell, the genes that regulate cell growth and differentiation must be halted. The affected genes are divided into two broad categories. Oncogenes are genes that promote cell growth and reproduction. Tumor suppressor genes are genes that inhibit cell division and survival. In this study session, you will be learning about cancer and heredity, oncogenes, mutation and ways of preventing cancer. Learning outcome. At the end of this study session, you should be able to explain the link between cancer and heredity. Define oncogenes. Discuss the relationship between mutation and cancer. Highlight ways of preventing cancer. Heredity and cancer. Cancer is not considered an inherited illness because most cases of cancer, perhaps 80 to 90 percent, occur in people with no family history of the disease. However, a person's chances of developing cancer can be influenced by the inheritance of certain kinds of genetic alterations. These alterations tend to increase an individual's susceptibility to developing cancer in the future. For example, about 5% of breast cancers are thought to be due to inheritance of particular forms of a breast cancer susceptibility gene. Genetic testing Laboratory tests can determine whether a person carries some of the genetic alterations that can increase the risk of developing certain cancers. For example, women who inherit certain forms of a gene called BRCH1 or BRCH2 have an elevated risk of developing breast cancer. For women with a family history of breast cancer, taking such a test may relieve uncertainty about their future risk. However, the information obtained from genetic tests is often complex and difficult to interpret. The decision to undergo genetic testing should therefore be a personal, voluntary one and should only be Two, and should only be made in conjunction with appropriate genetic counseling. Cancer risk and aging. Because a number of mutations usually must occur for cancer to arise, the chances of developing cancer increase as a person gets older because more time has been available for mutations to accumulate. For example, a 75-year-old person is a hundred times more likely to develop colon cancer than a 25-year-old because people are living longer today than they did 50 or 100 years ago. They have a longer exposure time to factors that may promote gene changes linked to cancer. 
genes and cancer. Chemicals, e.g. from smoking, radiation, viruses and heredity all contribute to the development of cancer by figuring take two by triggering changes in the cell's genes. Chemicals and radiation act by damaging genes. Viruses introduce their own genes into cells and heredity passes on alterations in genes that make a person more susceptible to cancer. Genes have inherited instructions that reside within a person's chromosomes. Each gene instructs a cell how to build a specific product, in most cases, a particular kind of protein. Genes are altered or mutated in various ways as part of the mechanism by which cancer arises. DNA mutation. Genes can be mutated in several different ways. The simplest type of mutation involves a change in a single base along the base sequence of a particular gene, much like a typographical error in a word that has been misspelled. In other cases, one or more bases may be added or deleted, and sometimes Large segments of a DNA molecule are accidentally repeated, deleted, or moved. Oncogenes One group of genes implicated in the development of cancer are damaged genes, called oncogenes. Oncogenes are genes in which presence certain forms and or Overactivity can stimulate the development of cancer. When oncogenes arise in normal cells, they can contribute to the development of cancer by instructing cells to make proteins that stimulate excessive cell growth and division. Proto-oncogenes and normal cell growth. Oncogenes are related to normal genes called proto-oncogenes that encode components of the cell's normal growth control pathway. Some of these components are growth factors, receptors, signaling enzymes, and transcription factors. Growth factors bind to receptors on the cell surface, which activate signaling enzymes inside the cell that, in turn, activate special proteins called transcription factors inside its cell's nucleus. The activated transcription factors turn on the genes required for cell growth and proliferation. Oncogenes arise from the mutation of proto-oncogenes. They resemble proto-oncogenes in that they code for the production of proteins involved in growth control. However, Oncogenes called for an altered version or excessive quantities of these growth control proteins, thereby disrupting a cell's growth signaling pathway. By producing abnormal versions or quantities of cellular growth control proteins, oncogenes cause a cell's growth signaling pathway to become hyperactive.
To use a simple metaphor, the growth control pathway is like the gas feather of an automobile. The more active the pathway, the faster cells grow and divide. The process of an oncogen is like having a gas feather that is stuck to the floorboard, causing the cell to continually grow and divide. A cancer cell may contain one or more oncogens, which means that one or more components in this pathway will be abnormal. Tumor suppressor genes A second group of genes implicated in cancer are the tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes are normal genes whose absence can lead to cancer. In other words, if a pair of tumor suppressor genes are either lost from a cell or inactivated by mutation, their functional absence might allow cancer to develop. Individuals who inherit an increased risk of developing cancer often are born with one defective copy of a tumor suppressor gene. Because genes come in pairs, one inherited from each parent. An inherited defect in one copy will not lead to cancer because the other normal copy is still functional. But if the second copy undergoes mutation, the person then may develop cancer because there no longer is any functional copy of the gene. One particular tumor suppressor gene code for a protein called P53 that can trigger cell suicide, apoptosis. In cells that have undergone DNA damage, the P53 protein acts like a brake feather to halt cell growth and division. If the damage cannot be repaired, the P53 protein eventually initiates cell suicide thereby preventing the genetically damaged cell from growing out of control. DNA repair genes Third type of genes implicated in cancer is called DNA repair genes. DNA repair genes code for proteins whose normal function is to correct errors that arise when cells duplicate their DNA prior to cell division. Mutations in DNA repair genes can lead to a failure in repair, which in turn allows subsequent mutations to accumulate. People with a condition called exoderma pigmentosome have an inherited defect in a DNA repair gene. As a result, they cannot effectively repair the DNA damage that normally occurs when skin cells are exposed to sunlight, and so they exhibit an abnormally high incidence of skin cancer. Certain forms of hereditary colon cancer also involve defects in DNA repair. Cancer may begin because of the accumulation of mutations involving oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes, and DNA repair genes. For example, colon cancer can begin with a defect in a tumor suppressor gene that allows excessive cell proliferation. The proliferating cells then tend to acquire additional mutations involving DNA repair genes other tumor suppressor genes, and many other growth-related genes. Over time, the accumulated damage can yield a highly malignant, metastatic tumor. In other words, creating a cancer cell requires that the breaks on cell growth, tumor suppressor genes, be released at the same time that the accelerators for cell growth oncogenes are being activated mutations and cancer. While the prime suspects for cancer linked mutations are the oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes and DNA repair genes, 
cancer conspires even beyond this. Mutations also are seen in the genes that activate and deactivate carcinogens and in those that govern the cell cycle. Cell senescence, or aging, cell suicide, apoptosis, cell signaling, and cell differentiation. And still, other mutations develop that enable cancer to invade and metastasize to other parts of the body. In addition to all the molecular changes that occur within a cancer cell, the environment around the tumor changes dramatically as well. The cancer cell loses receptors that would normally respond to neighboring cells that call for growth to stop. Instead, tumors amplify their own supply of growth signals. They also flood their neighbors with other signals called cytokines and enzymes called proteases. This action destroys both the basement membrane and surrounding matrix which lies between the tumor and its path to metastasis, a blood vessel or duct of the lymphatic system. Cancer Prevention Since exposure to carcinogens, cancer-causing agents, is responsible for triggering most human cancers, people can reduce their cancer risk by taking steps to avoid such agents. Hence, the first step in cancer prevention is to identify the behaviors or exposures to particular kinds of carcinogens and viruses that represent the greatest cancer hazards. Avoid tobacco. As the single largest cause of cancer death, the use of tobacco products is implicated in roughly one out of every three cancer deaths. Cigarette smoking is responsible for nearly all cases of lung cancer and has also been implicated in cancer of the mouth, larynx, oesophagus, stomach, pancreas, kidney, and bladder. Pipe smoke, cigars, and smokeless tobacco are risky as well. Avoiding tobacco is therefore the single most effective lifestyle decision any person can make in attempting to prevent cancer. 2. Protect yourself from excessive sunlight. While some sunlight is good for health, skin cancer caused by excessive exposure to sunlight is not among the sun's benefits. Because some types of skin cancer are easy to kill, the danger posed by too much sunlight is perhaps not taken seriously enough. It is important to remember that a more serious form of skin cancer called melanoma is also associated with excessive sun exposure. Melanomas are potentially lethal tumors. Risk of melanoma and other forms of skin cancer can be significantly reduced by avoiding excessive exposure to the sun, using sunscreen lotions, and wearing protective clothing to shield the skin from ultraviolet radiation. 3. Limit alcohol and tobacco. Drinking excessive amounts of alcohol is linked to an increased risk for several kinds of cancer, especially those of the mouth, throat, and oesophagus. The combination of alcohol and tobacco appears to be especially dangerous. For example, in heavy smokers or heavy drinkers, the risk of developing cancer of the oesophagus is roughly six times greater than that for non-smokers or non-drinkers. But in people who both smoke and drink, the cancer risk is more than 40 times greater than that for non-smokers and non-drinkers. Clearly, the combination of alcohol and tobacco is riskier than would be expected 
by just adding the effect of the two together. 4. Diet Limit fats and calories Studies suggest that differences in diet may also play a role in determining cancer risk. Unlike clear-cut cancer risk factors such as tobacco, sunlight and alcohol, dietary components that influence cancer risk have been difficult to determine. Limited fat consumption and calorie intake appears to be one possible strategy to decrease risk for some cancers because people who consume large amounts of meat, which is rich in fat, and large numbers of calories exhibit an increased cancer risk, especially for colon cancer. 5. Diet Consume fruits and vegetables. In contrast to factors such as fat and calories, which appear to increase cancer risk, other dietary components may decrease cancer risk. The most compelling evidence has been obtained for fruit and vegetables. Oat consumption has been strongly correlated with a reduction in cancer risk. Although the exact chemical components in these foods that are responsible for a protective effect are yet to be identified. Eating 5 to 9 servings of fruit and vegetables each day is recommended by many groups. 6. Avoid cancer viruses. Actions can also be taken to avoid exposure to the small number of viruses that have been implicated in human cancers. A good example is the human papillomavirus, HPV. One of the more than 100 types of HPVS, over 30 types can be passed from one person to another through sexual contact. Among this, there are certain high-risk types recognized as the major cause of cervical cancer. Having many sexual partners is a risk factor for infection with these high-risk HPVs, which can increase the chance that mild cervical abnormalities will progress to more severe ones or to cervical cancer. 7. Avoid carcinogens at work. Because people spend so much time at work, potential carcinogens in the work environment are studied carefully. Some occupational carcinogens have been identified because Co-workers exposed to the same substances have developed a particular kind of cancer at increased frequency. For example, cancer rates in construction workers who undo asbestos have been found to be 10 times higher than normal. 8. Industrial pollution The fact that several environmental chemicals can cause cancer has fostered the idea that industrial pollution is a frequent cause of cancer. However, the frequency of most human cancers adjusted for age has remained relatively constant over the past half century, in spite of increasing industrial pollution. So, in spite of evidence that industrial chemicals can cause cancer in people who work with them or in people who live nearby. Industrial pollution does not appear to be a major cause of most cancers in the population at large. Summary In this study session, you have learned the following. 1. Cancer is not considered an inherited illness because most cases of cancer, perhaps 80 to 90%, occur in people with no family history of the disease. However, a person's chances of developing cancer can be influenced by the inheritance of certain kinds of genetic alterations. These alterations tend to increase an individual's susceptibility to developing cancer in the future. 2. Oncogenes are genes in which present certain forms and or overactivity 
can stimulate the development of cancer.